and it. My name is Odell McFarland III, and I am the senior pastor of God's Harbor for All Souls, and it brings me great pleasure to bring the Word of God to you again on another Sunday. Listen, God has truly been blessing us. He has truly been giving us revelation knowledge, and we give Him all of the glory and all of the honor. I'm so grateful for what He is doing in the lives of the people of God, not only in our local body, but in churches all over the country, all over the world. Truly, God is preparing his people in these last and evil days. And in order for us to be prepared, God has called us to fast and to pray. And I am so glad for our own Sister Kim Applewhite for the charge of prayer and fasting that God has led us to do for this month. And on next week, I will be ministering on fasting and prayer and on the benefits that it has for us, both spiritually, physically, and mentally. And so, please, prepare yourselves to come out and hear the Word of God, but furthermore, prepare yourselves to truly begin this journey. And I call it a spiritual journey of fasting because there are so many benefits that God has when we combine fasting and prayer. And so, amen, if you have time, Please dedicate yourselves this week, and then on next Sunday, come prepared to hear the word from the Lord as it will give you insights into why this topic is so important. So come next week to hear the word of the Lord. Listen, we're excited about what God has laid on our hearts to share as we began to truly dive into the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom and we are going to truly dive into the Word of God. And so we're going to not go amongst our own knowledge, but we're going to dive into the Word of God and truly reveal why it is important that you know the Word of God and that you know who you are in Him and that you know who He is in your life. You see, last week we talked about how the enemy does not want you to know. He wants your eyes to be closed to who you are and who the Spirit of God is in you. And revelation is the most powerful tool that we have against the enemy. And the enemy always wants you to be afraid of who you really are. Because once you come into the knowledge or the wisdom of who you are, it's a game changer. It doesn't Amen. Level the playing field. It leverages it on your behalf. You begin to know and understand that every day you wake up, there is hope, there is victory, there is joy in your life because of who you are in Christ Jesus. I often said as a young man that I truly believe that just as God placed certain doctors on the earth, amen, for heart specialists, feet, amen, whether it's your eyes, Amen. Or a special organ. Amen. I truly believe that as a minister of the Lord, God has placed me in these last evil days as someone who can give you identity. Amen. Of who you are. Amen. And so if this bores you, amen, I'm sorry, because that's truly who God has made me to be. And that is a man that truly reveals in these last and evil days, who you are. And I truly believe as we get into the word of God, and I begin to show you through scripture how you are untouchable when you are folded into the body of Christ and when you understand the kingdom principles that devil cannot touch you. He wants to come and still kill and destroy as we show you in the word. But the enemy, he is as a roaring lion, as the Bible says, and we will dig into the word of God and show you why every morning that you wake up, every day, you should be filled with hope. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what is going on in your life, on your job, you who are students at school, in your communities, even in your family, what the enemy has roared his ugly head, amen, the devil can't touch you. He can't touch your finances. He can't touch your body. Amen. It is an illusion of what he thinks he can do. But when we get into the word of God, we're going to put forces of God's kingdom around every area of your life. And 
And so let's jump right into the word of God and begin to understand what God is calling for in these last and evil days. Let's turn to 1 John, the fifth chapter, uh, and we're going to start, amen, at the 18th verse. And it says, we know that whoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, listen at this, and that wicked one toucheth him not. You see, last week we talked about when you become a child of God, it is because you believe that Jesus died, rose again. He died, was buried, and rose again. And you believe that he is the savior of your soul. All you have to do is believe. And that belief in him transforms you, listen at this, into a son and daughter of God. That's simple. It is that simple. When you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead, it's the cross that gives you life. Let me say that again. It is the cross that gives you life, that makes you a new creature, that changes your identity from darkness into light, and it gives you, amen, a participation into God's family. Amen. You are now part of his family. That's what the enemy does not want you to know, is that when you are born again, you are born into the family of God. And let me tell you how powerful that revelation is. You who know who you are, amen, you can count on being a part of God's family. And just like you're a part of your natural family, there's nothing your mother or father can do, amen, legally, amen, to put you out of their family. You are a part of them, amen. And when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you accept his blood, you accept his life, you are a part of him, and the devil wants you to believe that you can be kicked out of his kingdom, of God's kingdom, amen, by behavior and by, amen, things that you think, amen, and by things that you say. And I'm coming to tell you that you are not condemned, amen, because the enemy wants you to believe that there is condemnation. The Bible says there is therefore no condemnation. Amen. For those who are where? In the family of God, in Christ Jesus. And so that revelation should allow you, amen, the freedom to operate every day with love, joy, peace, hope, and it should drive out all fear and doubt and unbelief. You see, as believers, one of the things that the enemy wants you to think is, is that God wants to kick you out of his kingdom, out of his family. Amen. He wants you to believe that you're not part of the kingdom. And that is what causes so many people, listen at this, to backslide, to run from God. Amen. Because they feel that the church has become judgmental and have, amen, caused Amen. Them to believe that they are no longer a part of the family. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that you who are born again, who have accepted Jesus as your Savior, who have confessed with your mouth, you are a part of the family. Hallelujah. And there are benefits, according to Psalms 103, there are benefits to being a part of God's family. Amen. And we're going to jump into it and we're going to explain it. But one of the things I want you to understand is the devil and his enemies and his imps, amen, his mind games, amen, it cannot touch you. The Bible says here, and then as we look at verse 18, we know that whoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one Touch it, come not. Listen at verse 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. We know, you've got to know that you are of God. Let's go to John 10.10, 10, because I want you to understand what the purpose of the enemy is. What 
he has been designed to do to the believer, he and the demonic forces of hell, amen, are coming, amen, to try fear, to try doubt, unbelief. But here's what they also, here's what the enemy is also trying to do. John 10, 10, it says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. See, the enemy has come to do what? To steal, kill, and to destroy. Amen. But he says, I have come that you might have life and that you might have that life more abundantly. So the purpose of the enemy, amen, is to steal your joy, steal your finances, steal, amen, your relationships, to kill your body, to bring sickness, disease, amen, and all kind of damnable things, amen, upon your mind, to bring depression, oppression. He's come to destroy families and destroy careers and businesses. But God says that his son came that we might have life and that more abundantly. My God, that's a good place to give him some praise. Amen. Let's go real quick to 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, listen at this, as a royal lion, not is, as a royal lion, walketh about. Seeking whom he may devour. You see, the enemy is seeking whom he may devour. And who can he devour? He devours those who don't know who they are, do not have the identity of who they are, don't know who family they are, who family they belong to, who their God is, who their father is, who their Abba is. He destroys you with doubt, fear, unbelief, oppression, sickness, that's who he devours. Those who don't have a strong belief system. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what we are doing today is building up your faith so that you will not be a target for the enemy to devour. When the doctor brings bad news, it doesn't depress you because you know greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know that by his stripes you are already healed. So the word of God, amen, brings security. It brings hope. It brings safety knowing who God is. And when the enemy tries to speak his lies to you, you know who you are. Amen. Let's continue to understand something about the Son of God and what his purpose was. All right. Let's go to 1 John 3, verse 8. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. But listen to this. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see, Jesus came not only to bring life and to bring salvation, amen, and to eliminate sin through his blood, but his purpose was also, amen, to destroy the works of the evil one. Amen. His tactics, his plans, his devices, all of these things, the enemy, amen, which tries to put upon you, the Bible says God sent his son to be manifested to destroy the works of the evil one. Hallelujah. And I'm going to show you through the word of God all throughout the Old and the New Testament where God's word shows that the devil can't touch you. You are untouchable. You may say, Pastor, I'm going through. I'm doing. But listen, you are going through. Hallelujah. Amen. The enemy is trying to grab you, but you have slipped through. I so many times remember, amen, reading through the word of God, how, amen, the Pharisees and Sadducees and those, amen, were after Jesus Christ. Amen. And I love the scriptures where the Bible says Jesus slipped through the crowd as they tried to grasp him. You see, they couldn't take his life. He gave 
his life. Hallelujah. Amen. And they tried to cast him over, amen, the cliffs of the mountains. They tried to kill him, amen. They could not touch him until he gave himself. Amen. Over to them. Hallelujah. You see, the enemy wants you to think that he has power, but he has no power unless you give him the power through your doubt, through your unbelief, through your mouth, what you see, what you hear. Amen. Here's what the Bible says. Listen at this. I want you to turn to, amen, James 4, 6. Listen at this. He says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Listen at this. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And then when you resist him, amen, he has no right but to do what? But to flee. How do you resist him? By putting him in your mind, the word of God that is, by putting it on your tongue, building up your faith, amen, by listening to the word of God like you're doing right now, by reading the word of God, by attaching yourselves to those, amen, who decree and declare the word of God, those who, amen, are full of God's grace. That's when you know, amen, the devil is. He can no longer contain himself in your environment because the presence of the Lord, the peace of God is there to drive out the force of the enemy. Let's go back to, amen, 1 John. I want to share something with you. 1 John 3, 1, 2. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called, let's say this, the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2. Beloved, here it is, now are we the sons of God. Right now are we the sons of God. You have an inheritance, amen, you have benefits by being in the family of God, amen. And if you don't take hold of your rights of healing, financial deliverance, amen, mental deliverance, amen, all of the things that are wrapped up, salvation, deliverance from sin, all of those things come from you being in the family of God. Listen at this, but love, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. But listen at the key. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Hallelujah. Now are we the sons of God. Let's go. I'm going to share with you. Amen. Let's go back to James, the fourth chapter. Verse 8. And before we do that, let's go to verse 7. It says, Submit yourselves, verse 7, therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Listen, when you draw nigh to him, what are you doing? You are meditating on his word. Amen. You are getting before the presence of God. Amen. And you now are surrounding yourself with the refuge. Amen. That hiding place that Psalms 91 is talking about, where the enemy does not want to dare, amen, enter into that presence. You see, the glory of God is in you. It is upon you. He has given his spirit, amen, because when Jesus went back up into heaven, the Bible says that he sent his comforter, his comforter comforts us, gives us the glory of God from heaven. It gives us all of the goodness of God, all of God's goodness, listen at this, resides inside of you today. Listen at this again. All of God's goodness resides inside of you right now. Hallelujah. You see, the enemy doesn't want you to understand that all things, all spiritual things is in your mouth. It is in your spirit. Amen. And when you begin to truly get revelation of who you are, the devil, amen, will begin to flee. Amen. Knowing that he, guess what? 
before we go to verse 17, let's go to Isaiah 54, 14. It says, in righteousness shalt thou be established. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. It shall not come near thee. Why? Because the glory of God is upon you. The glory of God, his goodness is in you because you have established yourself in righteousness, in right standing, knowing that your goodness is not good enough. Amen. But you are just resting in the works of Jesus and not in the works of the flesh. Amen. And you are establishing yourself in righteousness, knowing that when you do that, it says here in verse 14, it shall not come near thee. Listen at verse 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. When they even try to come, Amen. Against you, against your business, against your family, against your man. Whenever they try to come against you, they shall fall. They shall fail. The enemy's plans will be obliterated. Amen. Because he cannot come nigh the presence of God. He cannot come nigh the glory of God. And that glory on the earth is represented by you. Amen. It is manifested in you. Hallelujah. Oh, this is so good. Let's go. Hallelujah. To verse 17. Here it is. Let's first, let's go first to verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon, verse 17, that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue, the tongue that comes against you to bring mental anguish, the tongue of financial disparity, the tongue, amen, of relationship failure, every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord their inheritance or their heritage. And guess what? Not just servants, but now that heritage or inheritance is to the sons and daughters of God. Amen? I hope you're getting something out of this today. Let's go real quickly to Isaiah 41, 10, verse 12. Isaiah 41, 10, 12. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold with thy, with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Hallelujah. Incensed, amen. He says, everything that comes against you, Amen. Listen at this. That were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm talking about today? Hallelujah. Amen. They shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall perish. Everything that the enemy has tried to come against you with. He's tried to bring people against you, things against you. Amen. He's tried to bring family against you, church people against you. Whatever it is, they can't stand to come against the glory of God. The enemy has tried to bring sickness, disease, amen, depression upon you. Amen. People still don't know how you're standing so strong, how your faith is so strong. With the things some of you have gone through, people have expected you to have lost your mind. With the death in your family, the sickness, amen, that has come in your family, amen, the enemy tried to bring depression upon you. But guess what? You will not fail. You will come through with the victory, and he will 
ashamed and confound the wicked because God's glory is upon you. Amen. And when the glory is upon you, he can't touch you. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you get, catch the mystery? And I want you to decree and declare today, God's glory is upon me. His goodness is in me. Amen. His spirit is in me. His favor is for me. Amen. His grace abounds towards me. Amen. I am a son and a daughter. Do you hear yourself confessing? Decree and declare today that your, amen, your ladder shall be greater. Amen. And today you are walking in complete victory. Amen. Let's go. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43. We're going to close. I know. This is so good. It says, verse 43, chapter 43. Let's go to verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. You are God's. You are his children. He has redeemed you. Amen. He has bought you with the price. And he has bought you with the price of Christ's blood. And the enemy can't stand to know that you know that you've been redeemed. That you've been bought with the price. That you are his. And so I want you to decree and declare today that I belong to God. I am his. I am redeemed. I have his glory. And I am untouchable. It, Satan, everything that you try to come and bring to me today will be obliterated. Every plan, every device that you have, set every trap, it will be obliterated. Hallelujah. Decree and declare that today in Jesus' name. Listen at verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. When the enemy tries to bring the fire, amen, of hell upon you, you won't be touched. Verse 3, for I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, the Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, and Saba for thee. Verse 4, since thou wast precious in my sight, Thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, and I have loved thee. Guess what? You are part of the kingdom of God. Amen. You are a part, amen, of the body of Christ. You are who he is talking about. He loves you. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for their life. Verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Fear not, I am with thee. Oh my God, I hope you're getting this. I hope it's building your faith to know, amen, that no weapon is formed against you, that nothing shall touch you, amen, that he is ashaming, amen, he is confounding and confusing, amen, the enemy. He is displacing, he is obliterating his plans. He is taking every power that the enemy thought he has, and Jesus has already destroyed it. Bible says he made a show of them openly. He spoiled principalities. Hallelujah. My God. Did you catch the mystery? Come on, let's go real quick. Oh, my God. We fit up close. A couple more scriptures. 91 3. Psalms 91 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. And then let's go to verse 7. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand. Listen to this. But it shall not come nigh thee. Amen? It shall not come nigh thee. That is the word of the Lord. And who is he talking about? Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is the shadow of the Almighty? It is his covenant. Amen. It is his word. Amen. It is everything that grace provides to us. It is his presence. It is his glory. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Amen. The secret place is that the righteous is full of grace, full of favor. Amen. Full of his healing full of his jubilee, full of
full of financial freedom, amen, full of mental anguish. It is no longer mental anguish, but it's mental freedom. All of that is in the secret place of the Most High. We're going to close with this. And I want you to go, amen, to Daniel, the third chapter, amen. And we're going to talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the fiery furnace, amen. The king said, bow down, and if you don't bow, we all know the story, that you shall be thrown into the furnace. Let's go to 322. We're going to just read. We're going to close with this. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the fire killed the men who put them in the flame. That's how hot the fire was. Verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fire and furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was a down a stone and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Listen at this, verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. Mm. No hurt. No hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. My God, God was in the fire with them. What is that telling you? That the Holy Spirit, amen, is in you. He's with you. He's for you. He is on you. Just like he was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, truly God is inside of you through his Spirit, so that no fire, no flame, no device, no tactic, no sickness, no disease can harm you. Amen? Hallelujah. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shire, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth up the midst of the fire. Listen at this. Listen, listen at this. And the princes, governors, captains, kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. The fire had no power. The fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire had passed on them. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh my God, the fire didn't singe their hair, didn't burn their clothes, amen. The Bible says, amen, that it didn't touch their coats, amen. The fire had no power. The enemy has no power unless you allow him to have power over your life, over your mind, over your tongue, amen. And I'm telling you today, don't allow the enemy. The Bible says resist him and he will flee. How do you resist, resist him? Keep the word on your tongue. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your mind. And watch God do amazing things in your life. Why? Because you are untouchable. You are his. Amen. You belong to him. You are a part of his family. And God protects what's his. Bow your heads. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your revelation knowledge. We thank you for who you are and what you've done. Father, I pray that your people will continue to see who they are. Give them revelation. Give them wisdom to walk in the powerful word that you have given them. And Father, that they will understand how great you are and who you are in them. And God, we thank you for it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm excited. Amen, about what God is doing in your life. I'm excited about the word, amen, that God, amen, has provided. And I want you to understand today, amen, that we are here for you, amen, and we love your support, your prayers, through your finances, amen. We will show 
ways to give. Continue to pray for us. Amen. The enemy, amen, is out to attack, but we continue to believe God. Amen. We're praying for you. Amen. We're going to be fasting for you on this week. Amen. We're going to believe God for a mighty move. Amen. Of unity, of peace, of harmony in the body of Christ. Hey, if you don't have a church home, if you don't have anywhere to go, come out next Sunday as we begin to minister Amen. on the power of fasting and prayer and the benefits that it has spiritually, physically, amen, and even mentally upon your life. Amen. Listen, I want you to know that God loves you, but more importantly, I want you to also know that Jesus is Lord. We invite you to fellowship with us every first and third Sunday in our building where we are located at 4100 Maple Avenue, Rickton Park, Illinois. Join us on Zoom or dial in every Thursday night for prayer at 7.30 p.m. Thank you.